Lots of the treats that we eat at Easter time have special meaning behind them. From the marzipan balls on top of the simnel cake that represent the disciples, to the crosses on hot cross buns, and all the special meaning behind eggs. I thought I'd have a go at creating my own special Easter treat with some hidden meaning. So these are my resurrection biscuits. So my first ingredients for my biscuits are some nuts. But I don't want whole versions, I want crushed versions. So I'm gonna break them up into pieces. And this reminds us of the fact that after Jesus was arrested, he was really badly beaten uh, by the Roman authorities. Uh, and not treated particularly well. John 19, one to three says, then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and they went up to him again and again saying, hail the King of the Jews and slapped him in the face. My next ingredient is some vinegar. It's quite a strong smell. People aren't sure whether Jesus being offered vinegar on the cross from a sponge was mercy or mockery. The Roman soldiers liked to drink a very sort of uh, vinegary wine to refresh themselves, um, but there may also have been something mixed in it to take away the pain. So we're not sure, but certainly Jesus would have smelt this smell on the cross. Later, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he'd received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. Eggs, pretty universally represent life or new life. And so by adding these to the biscuits, it reminds us that Jesus gave his life on the cross. That's what Christians believe at this time of the year and that he bought for others eternal life by doing so. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Next in the bowl is a tiny bit of salt. I'm not sure what this does to the cookies. It definitely adds to the flavor. But um, in terms of thinking about the Easter story, it reminds us of the tears that the disciples shed um, at losing their mentor of the last three years. Uh, seeing Christ dying on the cross must have been a very, very difficult thing. And it also maybe reminds us of the bitterness of the things that uh, Christians believe that we do wrong, the things that we call sin, um, that Jesus was dying on the cross to try and deal with. So I'll add a bit of salt to my biscuits. Luke 23 says a large number of people followed him including women who mourned and wailed for him. So the next addition is sugar. Now, uh, sugar we know sweetens things up um, and it reminds us of the fact that the whole Easter story is centered around love and the love that Christ had for uh, his followers and for all people um, that led him to agree to go to the cross. He wasn't made to go, that's quite an important distinction. If Jesus was made to go, then uh, his Father in heaven is a very different kind of God, but Jesus agreed to go willingly out of love for everybody. John 3.16 is probably the most famous verse in the whole Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's now time to whip up the mixture. I like the fact that it's a really pure white, makes me think of the purity of Jesus. Isaiah 118 says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And that was a prophecy about what Jesus was gonna get up to on the cross. Next, I'm gonna fold in the nuts and chocolate. And I'm gonna try and make little rocky mounds on the baking tray. And there's a verse in Matthew that talks about this guy called Joseph of Arimathea, who took Jesus' body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and went away. So I had the oven on a nice high heat. And what I'm now gonna do is turn it off and pop them in overnight and leave them there. In Matthew 27, Pilate told the guards to go and make the tomb as secure as they knew how to. 
So they went along and they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone, and by posting a guard so that nobody could get in there overnight. And they went away and they left it. Three days later, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. But when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. There was an angel there who said to them, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who is crucified, but he is not here. He has risen. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they fell down and worshipped him. Now the really clever thing about these cookies is when you take them out in the morning, the middles are sort of dissolved away and they're left completely hollow. It's a really good reminder of the fact that the tomb was empty on Easter Sunday and that Jesus had risen and was no longer there. And that is exactly what Christians are celebrating across the globe on Easter Sunday. So whatever delicious things you end up eating over the next few weeks, maybe pause and have a think about the deeper meaning behind them. Happy Easter. Mm.